What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and today's video is going to be a salvage related video and it's also going to be a commentated salvage video. I know a lot of you guys really enjoyed that in the past and, and most of you have asked in our salvage videos could we actually commentate over them and kind of let you know what it is we're actually doing. Uh, we want to make more educational videos like that so that's exactly what we're doing today. I do need to explain something though, you're not going to see that much underwater footage for a couple of different reasons. One, this is a pretty typical salvage where the vessel is just partly submerged. Um, it was actually sitting on the bottom in about six to seven foot of water and kind of sitting up with the bow out of the water. So you're not really going to see much underwater footage because most of it's from the surface anyways. But the other reason is, is even if I would have filmed the salvage, uh, you wouldn't have been able to see nothing. We have had so much rainfall in a short period of time here in our area that we have kind of been cursed with a lot of flooding. All the, or all the lakes here on the Catawba River chain have just been absolutely flooded over. Um, the public safety department that I'm with, we have had so many calls of water rescue here lately. We've pulled people out of cars that were stuck in the middle of the road that were flooded. Uh, we've had cars that were stuck in ditches with uh, water overtaking them. Uh, we've had uh, our roads collapse here, even right up in front of our shop, our road has collapsed. And so we've had so much rainfall the lake itself is just chocolate soup. And I know it looks nice and calm out here behind me, but if you saw an aerial shot of this, you would see just how dark chocolate it really is. So even with a camera underwater, you wouldn't be able to see anything. But let's jump into the salvage and I'll try to do my best to explain exactly what it is we're doing and why we do things this way. And then I'll give you some final thoughts there at the end. All right guys, so as you can see, just a typical salvage force. The boat is partially submerged. Uh, I believe the rear or the stern of the, the vessel is only in about six to seven foot of water and of course some of the bow is actually sticking up. Um, here this is my business partner and one of our mechanics. Um, they are just helping us get the bags ready uh, to be able to deploy them in the water. I'm getting all the air out of them so that we can sink them. Uh, and we use subsal bags. They, uh, they tend to work very, very well for salvage work. It's what they're actually designed for. <clears throat> and they are probably an industry leader as far as salvage goes as well. Um, anytime we do work like this, uh, we try our best to always have a safety crew on board. So you're seeing myself and the other diver get ready, and then we also have tenders uh, that assist us getting ready as well. Um, especially when we wear dry suits and everything else, things tend to really get difficult to put on. So having that tender there on the surface really helps us as well. Now I'm going ahead and enter in the water here. I'm just going to do a, a quick little uh, search of the area. And I'm just walking around trying to fill debris, uh, see what's in the area so uh, we know if there's any hazards that we're going to be dealing with. And as you can tell, it's not very deep at all. Um, but the first order of business is, is we're going to hook these bags up uh, to the stern eye on the rear of the vessel just so that we can lift it up to be able to get a strap up underneath it. Now unfortunately with the vessel sitting on the bottom it's going to be very difficult for us to actually strap to the vessel so we're going to have to lift it up and kind of let it pivot on the bow temporarily. Plus, putting these two bags on is going to also help us stabilize that vessel uh, so that we can work on a, a flat platform, if you will. So as we hook up the airlines, and that's another question that I get asked a lot, is where do you get the air from to fill up these bags? Do you use the tank that's on your back? Do you take extra cylinders with you? Um, and it, it just really depends. If it's something very minor, maybe I'm just using a 50-pound lift bag, I'm just going to use the air that's on my back, depending on how deep I am. Uh, if I'm maybe in a situation where I'm using one of our 1,000 uh, pound lift bags, then I'm going to use a separate uh, cylinder, you know, like a side mount bottle or something like that that I take with me. In this situation, we're actually using a compressor at the surface, and we just run air lines straight to the bag. And I really like doing that um, because we can truly control it from the surface as well. Here you can see that we're stabilizing the vessel. We're lifting up one side to make it level, and, you know, we can communicate back and forth with the surface crew to say, okay, put more air in this bag versus this one just to stabilize it. And it tends to work out very well for us. Now, I know somebody's going to ask, why are you guys not in full face mask and that nasty of water? And wouldn't it be better to have communications? And in typical, yes, it would. We always want to have some type of communications with diver to diver or between diver to diver and diver to the surface. But in this situation, as you can tell, we're not very deep. Most of the work is being done here at the surface. Um, and it's just so much easier to, to communicate by simply pulling your regulator out of your mouth versus trying to talk through a comm unit and a 
full face mask and a lot of times those full face mask and comm units they only work when you're underwater anyway so we would constantly be having to remove our full face mask just to communicate with the service crew here um, but that's pretty much uh, why we're in just traditional mask right now. Now, as far as the uh, safety concerns with the nastiness of the water, I'm going to be honest with you, our, our lake's pretty nasty and we're pretty well used to it. But now that we got the boat uh, stabilized and we do have the rear of the vessel lifted, we're going to be deploying one of our lift straps. And basically, this is a belly strap that goes on the bottom of the vessel, and there's actually loops about every two foot uh, or every foot or so on the strap that allows us to hook our lift bags to it. So we're just basically running that strap up underneath the boat and we're trying to find a, a good place to position it um, because we want that vessel to stay stabilized as we bring it up to the surface. Uh, depending on what type of vessel you got, is it a V-drive, is it a, a true inboard outboard, is it a, uh, just a, a V-hole with an outboard engine, you want to be able to balance that vessel out during the lifting process. And so what we're going to do is we're going to position the strap and we're going to take this ratchet strap here to kind of hold it in place. Um, we've already determined the best uh, positioning for that strap. Um, and then, of course, like I said, we're going to ratchet it down to hold it. What I'm doing now is just adding a spring line to the vessel. Uh, if you're not familiar what a spring line is, it's kind of what helps a boat captain kind of dock in a windy situation or um, helps his tenders kind of help him dock a boat as well. But what we're doing here is attaching a spring line just so that we can rock the vessel um, so that I can get my bag up underneath the uh, boat itself. You'll notice that we've removed them from the stern and we're going to reposition them on that strap itself. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to actually pull the boat over using that spring line and now I can take the other lift bag and hook it straight to the strap. And uh, you know some of you I'm sure you'll ask why didn't you just do this to begin with? Why did you even hook up to the stern to begin with? Well in short we couldn't get the strap under it. The vessel is sitting on the bottom so we had to lift the vessel up to get our strap underneath and that way we can get the bags deep enough into the water to give us sufficient amount of lift to get that vessel up. But now that we have both bags hooked up, we're going to slowly start pumping air in them from the surface trying to keep it stabilized. And what we are actually after is to get the vessel up higher than what the uh, water level is on the gunnels. We need those gunnels completely out of the water. This particular vessel also had vents in the side of the boat and we've got to get them out of the water as well so that as we start to pump the water out of the vessel, there will be more water coming out than how much water is going in because if there's more water going into the vessel then you know pumping's really useless you're just pumping the lake back into the lake uh, but here you can see the the boat starting to come up we're starting to get the uh, front side of the gunnels up and the rear will start to come up as we add a little bit more air to the bags and then we can actually start the pumping procedures now you're going to see here shortly we're just going to use physics to our advantage here and we're going to put a little bit of pressure on that bow to get the stern up just a little bit higher. Due to the, the limited depth that this vessel is in, it was very difficult to get these bags all the way up underneath that vessel to create a, a decent cradle system. So we kind of had to do the best that we uh, could. Uh, here we've put one of our surface crew guys in. He's already started pumping. You see the water coming out there. You can clearly see the gunnels are completely out of the water. Um, and then what we're going to do after he adds this other pump what we're going to do is just kind of put extra weight on the front of that vessel to kind of help keep the stern up out of the water as well and then it's just a, a hurry up and wait game as that vessel is being pumped out uh, but you'll see that it, it just gradually floats a little bit more and a little bit more and keeps getting more positively buoyant so eventually we've got the vessel up it's floating um, and then of course we can pull it over but salvage work like this is not that difficult. Um, you do need to understand basic diving theory, basic lift theory. Uh, a lot of this stuff you can learn during your search and recovery course. So, you know, check out your local SSI facility, get signed up for a, a basic search and recovery course, and you can actually learn a lot of the same techniques that we're doing here. Yes, this is not a typical search and recovery. This is more considered salvage because of the item that we're trying to raise up. But you can learn the same stuff that we're doing uh, as far as lift theory and things like that uh, by just taking a basic search and recovery course. 
Now what we're doing here is just looking to see what other debris and stuff has come out of the vessel and see how much uh, more water that we need to pump out as well. Now that the vessel's floating, we're going to rig up to one of our salvage pontoons and we're going to tow it around so that the boat owner can put it on his trailer and bring it down to our boat repair facility and get it all fixed up for him. So hopefully within a week we'll have this boat up and going for him. He'll get to come out back out on the lake and have a good time. That is, of course, if the lake's cleared up. So guys, there you go. As you can see, it was a successful salvage. Um, it's not something that we rush through. We actually take our time on each and every one. We kind of reevaluate each step. So uh, we noticed that we wouldn't, we wasn't going to be able to get the strap under the the vessel to begin with. So we raised the vessel up, and then we slid the strap into place. Then we dropped the vessel back down, and we repositioned the bags. And we take salvage diving very seriously. We're very methodical when we plan out these dives. Uh, even just something as simple as this dive right here, we plan it out methodically for safety concerns uh, and we want to do everything we can to preserve the vessel of the owner. We don't want to get out there and just damage their vessel as we're bringing it up. Yes, that sometimes happens, but we try our best not to. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. I know we've been slack here recently on our videos and it's just simply because we have been so busy. But uh, if you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.